In this video, we are going to see about the complete end-to-end -end architecture of Apache Spark for absolute beginners. Firstly, we'll talk about what exactly is Apache Spark with a real-time example, and then we will discuss why it is very important to learn as a data engineer. And finally, we will dive deep into understanding every individual components of the Apache Spark architecture in a more detailed manner. Okay, now let's get started. Firstly, as I always like to explain concepts with an analogy, let's understand Spark by taking a real-world example. One interesting thing of Apache Spark is, the underlying principle of this architecture is kind of used in different real-world scenarios. For instance, let's take a restaurant as an example. Have you ever wondered how different types of dishes can be cooked much faster in restaurants compared to making the same number of dishes at home? If you know this, trust me, you already know how Apache Spark works. Let's break this down a little further. Usually, in restaurants, there would be three main roles. A master chef, a team of assistant chefs or workers, and then a restaurant manager. Now let's discuss how they work together as a team. Usually, when the restaurant gets an order, the master chef from the kitchen understands what needs to be cooked for the order plan them and divide the work and assign it to the different assistant chefs or workers. For example, someone will be assigned to cut the veggies and someone would be assigned to cook the actual meals and also someone would be assigned to pack the meal. All these workers will be working for the same order and will also be working in parallel to speed up the cooking process. And also during this time, the restaurant manager ensures that there are enough resources available to get the work done. For example, on a busy day, the manager is responsible for allocating more workers to the shift, while on less busy days, the manager should also reduce the number of workers in order to ensure that the restaurant operates efficiently. Usually, the master chef requests the number of assistants needed from the restaurant manager based on the workload, and the manager then allocates the workers to the shift as per the request. So this is the reason how different types of dishes are cooked faster in restaurants. Now these three roles can be exactly matched with the three main components of Apache Spark. Here the master chef can be replaced with a component called driver program. The assistant chefs or workers can be replaced with worker nodes. And finally the restaurant manager can be replaced with the cluster manager. So these are the three main components of Apache Spark. Here, the driver program is considered as master of this entire Spark architecture. When you try to process any data using Apache Spark, the driver program is the first one which would initialize the process and based on your processing code, the driver program understand what needs to be done, plans it and it would divide the work into multiple tasks and assign it to the worker nodes. The worker nodes are the ones which would actually execute the task as per the user code logic. In order to execute the task, the worker nodes needs to have enough compute and memory. So these compute and memory will be assigned by the cluster manager. After getting the storage and the compute from the cluster manager, all these worker nodes will execute their own task simultaneously. And once the worker nodes have completed their individual task, the driver program then aggregates all the results from each worker nodes and provide it to the user as the final result. Now, as you can imagine, due to this parallel processing abilities of Apache Spark, it is widely used in big data workloads and transformations. And that is the reason it is very important for data engineers to understand how Apache Spark works in order to efficiently process the data. So this is just the high level overview of Apache Spark. Now let's dive deep into understanding all the individual components in detail with an example. Also, one thing to note here is, Apart from these three main components, there are different things that we need to understand to get the detailed knowledge of Apache Spark. So the keywords are Spark Context or Spark Session, RDD, Lazy Evaluation, DAG, Executor, Stages, and Task. So if you're an absolute beginner, please don't get scared about all of these keywords. We are going to understand all of this with a simple example. Consider we need to run this piece of code in Databricks. So this is the simple code where it has three total steps, which are reading a CSV file as a data frame, removing all the duplicates from the data frame, 
and finally counting the total number of rows in the final data frame. Now let's discuss how Apache Spark works while running this code. Firstly, as we all know that, to execute any code in Databricks, we need to create a compute. As you can see here, while creating the compute, we have an option to choose the driver type and the worker type. Here, we can configure the memory and the CPU for both driver and the worker individually, which means that both the driver and the worker node will have separate compute and memory. Also, if you notice something here, for the worker type, we have an option to choose the min and the max worker. As discussed earlier, the cluster manager is the main component that allocates resources to the worker nodes. So basically, depends on the workload, the cluster manager decides how many workers are needed to perform a task based on the min and the max workers which is configured for the compute. Cool, so these are the three main components that we discussed earlier. Now, when you turn on the cluster in the Databricks to run the code, what will happen is, the driver program is the first one to get initialized and it creates something called Spark Context. So what I mean by Spark Context is, it is the entry point for all the interactions that needs to happen with the Spark cluster, which also means that the driver program can communicate with the cluster manager via Spark Context. So once the Spark Context is created, it connects to the cluster manager and prepare the environment for running the Spark code. And once the cluster is active, the environment is now ready to run these codes. Firstly, let's see the first step in reading the CSV file as a data frame. When you run this code, the Spark does not directly load the data from the CSV file to the memory. This is because Spark is lazy in nature, which means that instead of reading the data from the CSV, at first, Spark creates a logical plan before actually loading it. I will come back to the lazy topic a bit later. Firstly, when you run this code, the driver program receives this request and creates a logical plan based on your code. And this logical plan is created in the form of DAG. DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. This contains information about all the steps that is needed in order to read the CSV file as a data frame, which includes things like pointing to the file path, schema inference, and the options like header equal to true. Another important part is, for each individual steps in the DAG, there will be an associated RDD. RDD stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset, which is the fundamental data structure of Apache Spark, which means that this is how Spark stores the data in memory. When running this code, the RDDs are created representing the data to be loaded from the CSV file. However, no data is actually loaded yet, and it is only created as a logical plan as discussed earlier. Also, one thing to note here is, this RDD is immutable, which means that once RDD is created, it cannot be modified. So when a transformation takes place in the future, it only creates a new RDD and the old one will be remain as it is. This ensures fault tolerance. For instance, if a RDD is lost, Spark can recompute the lost data using the logical plan lineage information, which contains details of how the RDD was derived from another RDD. Okay, now let's come back to this lazy topic. As I mentioned earlier, Spark is lazy in nature. It will not directly execute the code when you run it. Instead, it first creates a logical plan in the basis of DAG. So this entire DAG will be actually executed only when an action command is called in your code. These are some of the examples of the action command in PySpark. So unless and until an action command is called in your code, Spark does not execute it. And it just keeps on adding the steps to the DAG based on the transformation that you're doing in your code. And this process in Spark is called as lazy evaluation. So to summarize this, when you run this code, Spark does not directly load the data from the CSV. Instead, it just creates a logical plan in the form of DAG. Now let's see what will happen while running the second line of code. As you can see here, this code basically removes all the duplicate records from the data frame. 
So this code will be considered as a transformation code since there is no action command in it. Which means that Spark will update the DAG by adding this remote duplicate transformation to the logical plan and it will not execute it straight away similar to the first code. Cool, now let's see what will happen if we run the final code which counts the total number of records in the data frame after removing the duplicate records. Now the most interesting part here is, since the count operation is an action command, this is the point where Spark will execute the logical plan created in the previous step. As part of this execution, firstly the driver program will break the DAG logical flow into multiple stages. Say for example, in this case, the stage 1 can be reading the CSV file from the storage and the stage 2 can be removing the duplicates from the data frame and finally the stage 3 can be counting the total number of rows in the filtered data frame. And each of these three stages will be further divided into multiple tasks. Each task corresponds to a partition of the data. For example, if the CSV file is split into two partitions, two tasks are created per each stage. Therefore, totally six tasks to process all the three stages. And once this is done, the driver program then splits and assigns these stages and tasks to the executors of the worker nodes. An executor in a worker node is responsible for executing the task assigned to it by the driver. The driver then monitors the execution and eventually collects the results from the worker nodes. And now, in order for the worker nodes to perform the actual task, they need to have compute and storage resources. So for this reason, the driver program submits the DAG logic flow to the cluster manager asking to allocate the required resources for the worker nodes. Upon receiving the DAG from the driver, the cluster manager allocates resources to the worker nodes and then it schedules tasks based on the available executors on the worker nodes. Also, the cluster manager ensures that the tasks are distributed efficiently to speed up the process. And once the worker nodes have got the required resources and tasks, each worker node's executor will perform all the steps with their assigned partition of the CSV file. Here the first step would be reading the CSV file from the storage into its local memory. And then the executors apply the drop duplicates transformation on the data, which removes the duplicate rows within their partition. And finally, the executors count the rows in their respective partitions and send this count back to the driver. And all the worker nodes execute tasks in parallel, which really speed up the process as discussed earlier. The driver then aggregates the results from the worker nodes to calculate the final row count. This final row count will be returned as a result to the user in the Databricks notebook. So this is the overall process of the Spark architecture. I hope you now have a clear idea of how Spark works while executing your PySpark code. In this video, we have seen about different topics like driver program, cluster manager, worker node, Spark context, DAG, RDD, stages, task and executor, and also seen about how all of these different components work together in the Spark architecture. I hope you found this video useful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.